Hey guys, BNSF Rail fans here, and today we're going to be doing an in-depth review of the newest Intermountain ES44 DC uh, with Tsunami Sound. Along with that, we're also going to be doing a comparison between this locomotive and Adlern's new ES44 AC. Um, and this is going to be a collaboration video between me and Trainaholic. So look in the description of this video to see that video and check his out too because we're going to be doing kind of the same review process for both locomotives. So as you can see we have my Heritage 3 ES44 DC number 7063 and then behind that we have my other older Intermountain ES44 DC and H2 number 7724 just here for comparison purposes. Alright so as you can see the headlight is their two crisp LEDs as well as the ditch lights, uh, as well as the number boards light up, which is something the Intermountain has over the Adlern Jeeva. Alright, so now I'm going to start her up and show you guys the horn, the bell, and some other sound functions. So both the Adlern and the Intermountain, uh, they both have tsunami decoders, so the sounds are they're uh, similar, they're not identical, the horn on the Adlern is different as well as the bell, so I'll show you that right now, horn, bell, I mean, bell, horn, sorry about that, um, so yeah, that's the sound, we have short horn, and then long horn, which can be triggered as long as you want, alright, so now, move it forward for you guys. You hear the dynamic break. I'll move it backwards. One thing I like about this Intermountain run over the previous run, uh, the sound has been tweaked a little bit as well as the speaker. This locomotive is louder, more clear, has more bass when it throttles up. You guys can see this in my other review video where I did uh, this compared with the older Jeeva. Alright, so here we have dynamic brake. We also have air release. And that classic GE whooping sound. As well as another short let off. And the coupler. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the underframe detail. Uh, the thing I noticed between the Intermountain and the Adlern, I think the Adlern has a little bit more detail uh, along the underframe as well as the car body on the sides. But the Intermountain's still pretty good. We got piping, brake cylinders all under there. As we down, we have the E bell, air tanks, more detail. Also, under the sill, I don't know if I can get my. There's a little bit less piping under the sail for the traction motors, but it still is not bad. The other thing I noticed um, along the front of the locomotive, uh, the MU cables are not tipped silver like the Adlern is. That's not a big deal. Anyone can, you can just do that with like a little bit of paint or whatever, but yeah, so that's one thing that's different. I'll do the other side now, hold on, try to get around here. Other side's basically the same. Same amount of detail. Along, as well as the back pilot. Along the sides of the locomotive, we have placards and warning labels all the way down. Um, one thing, or two things I noticed between this and the add-in, the Intermountain, the grills are not painted, so they, I mean, you can do that afterwards, but it's nice to have them stock painted so they give you that weathered look. Um, as well as, I think, I don't know if this, I haven't seen one in person, but uh, all the little doors and hatches along the side of the locomotive, they look more recessed on the island, like the, the grooves are kind of deeper, if that makes sense. Uh, it really defines the doors, and that's what stands out. Uh, in pictures for me between the two. That's not a huge thing, but 
Whatever, so that's this side. On this side, it's about the same. Long electronics cabinet. Uh, the AC and the DC are a little bit different, but not by much. And internally, they're identical. So, yeah. Same amount of detail there. Um, so now we have, do have a cab interior. At least I don't know if I can get my camera in there. But there is a fully decorated cab interior. It's kind of hard to see with the camera and the reflection, but in person it's quite easy to see. And now, okay, so moving to the top of the locomotive. The GPS dome. And as you can see, like, as Trader Hall said, his hatches on the top are separately applied, so they have some elevation here. Here they're just kind of molded in. I know they're kind of small detail, but I don't know, it makes the atoms stand out. All the placards are crisp, as well as the K5LA horn. Another thing I kind of just realized was the fans back here. On the atom unit, they are silver. Around the back, and as you said, uh, the other handrails are uh, that kind of flimsier plastic. Uh, so as I was saying over here on this other dash nine, this is a ready to run, but you get the idea. Adam likes to use this thin plastic, which uh, it's pretty good. Um, it doesn't break very easily, but it is very bendy. Uh, on the intermountains, the width of the handrails is about the same, but. As you can see, they're a lot more stiffer plastic. I don't know if you guys can tell. But, in person, they're a lot more stiffer plastic, which is... I don't know, it's kind of give or take. Uh, their first run was very brittle. And people had issues with it breaking. The second run is a little bit better, but it's still pretty stiff. Uh, it's not really a big thing. It's kind of like uh, preference. I, I, I think they're okay. As they are. So, yeah. Uh, last thing... Uh, Trader Holic was saying with the KD coupler stock. That's another thing if you guys like metal couplers, you have to replace them to come stock, factory, KD number five. And that's about it for details on the locomotive, but now we're gonna talk about price. See this is where the Intermountain kinda uh it comes into play. Uh MSRP on the sound units I think is a two I think it's around two fifty. Is that right, camera? Two fifty, but I mean, you can easily find them on eBay for like between one eighty two hundred, which is a lot better than Adams uh, the Adam Genesis, which retails for is it like three hundred? Yeah, two hundred fifty. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, the prices on the uh, Adams will come down eventually, as these did, but right now, uh, the price gap's pretty big. So I mean, two hundred dollars for a sound unit and like you can pick up the DCC only versions for like 130 which is crazy so I mean the value is still with the Enter Mountains on this one uh so yeah I mean you guys are up to, it's your decision I'm probably gonna get a few add-ins as well as the newest run of uh, ES44 C4 when they come out so you guys will see that on my channel and with that thank you for watching and go check out Trader Hall's video